We thank you, Lord, for being with the Imbeth and Morissette family. We pray, God, that you continue to strengthen them and that you will give them unity as they stand together in one unit as they go through this time of sorrow. We pray, dear Lord, that your presence be in this place and may we have an uh, encouraging gathering here that your name will be praised, honored, and glorified in Jesus' name. Let's be seated. Okay, so we'll be singing the first four songs in your leaflets. So the first one, when we all get to heaven, followed by, because you live, I shall see the King and goodness of God. Everybody, sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. Yeah. 
I shall see the King and forever endless praises sing. Twas on Calvary, Jesus died for me. I 
shall see the King someday. of God and I know this is a song that must be one of the favorites of the congregation it's one of my favorite songs I love you Lord for your mercy never fails me. All my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, where I will sing of the goodness of God.
This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Your very word. Spoken to me. Spoken to me. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you immensely for the opportunity to celebrate the life of Sister Imbert. We ask God that every heart in this room will be consoled by the soothing balm of your Holy Spirit. And may we continue to reflect on the wonderful memories that we have had with Sister Imbert. May today be a day of peace and consolation to those who are grieving. In Jesus' mighty name, let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Let me say a pleasant good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Of course, it's always a difficult thing to welcome persons to services like these. You never really know what to say and how to say it. And so I try to keep welcomes as brief as possible and simply say to the family members, to those of you who are also viewing online, we would like to welcome you to the celebration of life of Sister Cecilia Imbert. And I pray by the grace of God that you will all be comforted by what take, uh, takes place here 
this afternoon. Uh, you would notice on your program that Omari Alexander was supposed to have sang a song for us, but unfortunately he is unwell. I believe his replacement is Sister Amber Emmanuel, if my memory serves me correctly. Sister Amber will now do for us a musical rendition. Welcome her as she come. Gives her, give her, sorry, a big amen. Testing one, two. Ready. One, two. Testing one. Good afternoon, everyone. I pray that you be comforted by this song. And amidst the challenges that we go through, the hard times, let us be assured that we'll be okay because our lives are in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Testing and one, you will two, take good check. care of us no matter what. Testing one, two, sound check, one, two. All right, we're going to have to do without the music today. So please bear with me. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid Joy comes in the morning And troubles they don't last always For there's a friend named Jesus Who will wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken just lift your hands and say oh i know that i can make it i know that i can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in god's hands 
So when your test and trials they seem to get you down and all your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found remember there's a friend named Jesus who can wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken just to lift your hands and say oh I know that I can make it I know that I can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in his hands with Jesus I can make it with him I know I can stand no matter what may come our way our lives are in God's hands no matter what may come your way your life is in God's hands To Auntie Cecilia from your niece, Mina. Though I cannot be physically present today, my heart is with you as we bid you farewell. As I sit here reflecting on the memories we shared, I am overwhelmed by a flood of emotion. Among all my aunt, Among all my aunts, you held a special place in my heart not just because of our family bond, but because of the genuine love and care you showered upon me. Your kindness knew no bonds, and your positive spirit lifted me up even during the darkest of times. What struck me most about you was your unwavering positivity. You never judged, only encouraged. And your infectious smile could brighten even the gloomest of days. I passionately believe that you were pure of heart with not a single wicked bone in your body. Even when I am back on my journey away from St. Lucia, you remain the constant support and encouragement. Our phone calls were like therapy sessions and the sound of your voice brought immense joy to my heart. Your unwavering belief in me fueled my dreams, and for that, I am forever grateful. You always reminded me to trust in God in everything, my child. As your illness progressed, my heart ached knowing that I couldn't be physically present by your side. However, I made sure to call regularly, if only to hear your voice and express my love for you. When I received the news of your deteriorating condition, I call to speak with you, wanting desperately to tell you once more how much you mean to me. I manage the words, I love you, auntie, and you said I love you too. Though I hoped for a miracle, it wasn't meant to be. As I remain on that call, my emotions were a tumultuous mix of grief and acceptance. I wish fervently for a different outcome, longing to return home to shower you with blessings. But as I bid you farewell, I took solace in the knowledge that you were at peace, surrounded by love. And he says, Soya, this world is a lesser place without you. Your absence leaves a void that can never be filled. 
that your memory will forever live on in the hearts of those who are blessed to know you. I can almost hear your voice reassuring me that everything will be all right, that God's plan is always the best, my child, or in your words, Ishmoe. As I bid you farewell in this tribute, I find comfort in the lyrics of a song. I am jealous. I'm so jealous of the angels around the throne tonight. Rest in peace, dear Auntie Cecilia. For you're now among these those heavenly beings watching over us with that same radiant smile, with all your love, with all my love, Nina. Good afternoon, everybody. Please bear with me. Dear Granny, today as I sit down, Today, as I sit down to write, I wish it were under happier circumstances. I wish I were penning an invitation to share in joyful celebrations like my wedding, her graduation, or even a fulfillment of a dream. However, today calls for a different day. Sorry, a different kind of letter. A farewell to a remarkable woman who played so many roles in our lives. Ma David, Mamai Aslawe, born on the 26th of November in 1951, was a, not just a mother, a daughter, or a grandmother. She was a force of love and strength that held our family together. Raised amidst a bustling household of 14 children, Granny knew the value of hard work and perseverance of a young age. As a single mother of four, she faced challenges head on, turning what seemed impossible to attainable, attainable fits with unwavering faith and determination. Her mantra, Bordier si a bore Bordier, echoed her belief that through Christ, all things are possible. Family was Granny's cornerstone. She poured her heart into nurturing relationships. Whether through cherished moments spent together or long heartfelt, well, heartfelt phone calls, her love knew no bounds and she was there for each of us, life's trials and triumphs. Granny taught us that placing family above all else breeds a bound of love, respect and unwavering support, a legacy that continues to inspire us. After the loss of her husband, at a tender age, Granny experienced a profound spiritual awakening. Her faith became the bedrock of our life, of her life, sorry. Radiating through every aspect of her being, she wore her devotion proudly, imparting the values of faith and righteousness in, to those around her. Though not a prophet, she shepherded her flock with love and humility, embodying the teachings of her faith and grace, with grace and conviction. Granny's strength lay not only in her unwavering faith, but also in her gentle demeanor and compassionate soul. Her warm smile and welcoming embrace made everyone feel cherished and valued. She had a gift for connecting with everyone effortlessly striking up conversations and leaving a last impression on all who, who crossed her path. Memories of Granny abound, her mechanical prowess, as she meticulously cared for her, the car each morning, reminding me, Maki, you checked the car already? <laughs> you checked the water in the car? You checked the tire? You check the oil, you have gas. 
her endearing expressions in her native tongue. Ishma, vini mae debile atu, me atu mae apa u ikai vini fuat. Ishma, uni machine ala shime. And her concern if she didn't see us by a certain time. Ishma, upaka vini kaiu. She was a beacon of love and kindness, finding joy in the simple pleasures of life, like prayer, crafting coconut oil, and basking in the scenery of the beach. While I could spend hours recounting the countless ways Granny touched our lives, words fail to e encapsulate the depth of my love and admi admiration for, of her. Having her as my grandmother was a gift beyond measure, one that I would cherish for eternity. As we mourn the loss of, the extra of this extraordinary woman, we are grateful for the privilege of knowing her. Though she may no longer among us, walk among us, sorry, her spirit lives on in the hearts of all who were blessed to know her. We find solace in the belief that one day we will be reunited in the embrace of our grand maker. In bidding farewell to granny, we bid farewell to a piece of our hearts. As we carry her memory forward, we take comfort in knowing that her legacy of love and resilience will guide us through the days ahead. Granny, you were, were truly one of a kind, a beacon of light in our lives. Rest in peace, knowing that your love will live on in us forever. With heartfelt gratitude and love, yours forever, Makia. We'd like to invite everyone to please stand. Stand with me as we have this prayer of comfort. If you, are, if you are able to, if you are able to, I invite you to stand with us at this time. Great God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we would like to thank you for a life that was well lived. Thank you for the life of Sister Cecilia, dear God, who lived a life not only, dear God, for her family, to take care of her family, but also she lived a life for you. We thank you for the fact that she accepted you as Lord and Savior of her life. Dear God, today we have come to bid her farewell, to lay her body in the ground until the eastern sky will burst open and our Lord and Savior will return. Dear God, today we pray that you will comfort the family members, the children. Comfort the, the siblings, dear God, and grandchildren, and every um, relative who is grieving at this time. Lord, we are comforted by the fact that death is not the end. And one day, death itself will die. And there will be a reunion. May this be the hope of every family member today. May everyone, everyone, dear God, who is here, may everyone look forward to the day when Jesus will return and there will be no more pain, no more death, no more arthritis, no more cancer, no more dying. Lord, may this be the hope of the family members today, dear God. So I pray that even through your man's servant, you will bring words of assurance to everyone, dear God. So into your hands we commit this service. We commit everyone who is crying. And even as they cry, dear God, may they not cry as those who do not have hope. Because for the believer, death is never the end. Death is simply an intermission. Uh, a, a, a dress rehearsal for the real thing, dear God. So, Lord, even as they cry, 
May the hope of the second coming, dear God, be placed in front of every one of us, knowing truly that one day you will return yes. and the grave will be empty. There will be a resurrection, dear God. So we pray that you'll comfort us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Let everyone say amen, amen and amen. Please be seated. Okay, we would like to read in your hearing from Psalm, the 15th division of the Psalms. And David, David writes, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change, he who does not put out his money at a three, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. And David concludes by saying, he who does these things shall never be moved. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Philip. We now are ready to make way for the one whom God has appointed to speak his word on behalf of the Imbert family. A man who is, of course, a family member himself by association, by marriage, and of course, as a brother in Christ. Uh, before I introduce him, I would also like to introduce uh, our third member of the platform, whom you just heard, Pastor Lucius Philip, who also happens to be a family member, the Executive Secretary of the St. Lucia Mission of Seventh-day Adventists. I want you to just welcome him by giving him a big amen. Uh, to my back is the one whom God has appointed to preach and, uh, and teach and represent the family this afternoon. He is no stranger to the Imbert family. He's a very good friend of mine. He's a preacher of righteousness. He is an experienced pastor here in the St. Lucia Mission of Seventh-day Adventists, pastoring many districts. He is married to the lovely Sabiola Antoine, um, of course, Sabiola, uh, many of you are fully aware of who she is. She's a member of the Imbert family. She's a member of the grieving family. Uh, his son, I believe, might be here. His son is here. His son is here as well. So his entire family is here this afternoon. We want to say a massive welcome to them. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, I welcome to the podium none other than the one who is appointed to speak this afternoon, Pastor De Souza Antoine. Give him a big amen. amen. Before he speaks to us, Sister Amber will bless our hearts again. And the next voice that you will hear, no? Only one you had to sing? Only one? Oh, sorry. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> well, we would have put you, put you on the spot. That's, that's, that's all right. Um, uh, we, will sing, we will sing the hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. We will sing one stanza of that hymn. And the next voice that you will hear is none other than Pastor De Souza Antoine. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us. And the next voice that you will hear is Pastor Antoine. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, 
What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. When we all, when we all see Jesus. When we will sing and shout the victory. I'd like to extend the warmest condolences to the bereaved families, you know it is always a touching moment when someone you really love, you know, dies, is no longer with you. And so I would like to extend warm condolences to all who grieve and who have been touched by the passing of Auntie Cecilia Imbert. I really like the picture that was selected for the program sheet. It's, it really produces a, 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 a warm feeling in your heart when you see that smile. Well, ma'am, that, that smile, that wide smile there. <laughs> so it, it gives you, you know, a picture that you can live the rest of your life with. You know, it's, it's, it's always... Um, saddening when you have to live with the image of the person um, as they are in the in the in a coffin you know but when you have this picture there it really leaves a beautiful impression so ensure that you take a good look at the photograph it's really a lovely lovely pic this afternoon let me just convey my greetings to all who are here today who are here in person, physically present, as well as those who are here virtually. Those who are perhaps in, in London, some in St. Thomas, the USA, you know, all over the world, those who are tuning in, you know, via the World Wide Web. We are truly happy that you can share with us as we mourn with the Imbert family, the busy family, the extended family. It's, it's a wide family, and so this afternoon, I am truly grateful and, and thankful. Let me also convey my gratitude to the bishop of this district, the ancillary district, Pastor Rod Ray, for permitting me to to use his podium and to share God's word with you today. It's really his responsibility, but he has decided to share it with me, and I am ever grateful. At this time, I invite you to pray with me as we take a trip in God's word, as I desire by God's grace present a word that will bring comfort and I believe and I know God will use that word not just for today but for the rest of your life. Let us pray at this time. 
Father in heaven, we thank you for this awesome privilege to open the sacred, sacred word and to preach the sacred word. We know it is not entirely a human effort, but it is a combination of divine and human that can truly produce something beautiful, something wonderful, especially amidst a situation that is dark and difficult to comprehend. And so for this we give thanks. And we pray that you will minister to every heir as we listen to your word and every heart as we receive your word we pray in Jesus name amen let me acknowledge pastor john there in the congregation you know it's good to to have you with us here this afternoon my sermon is entitled do not weep Do not weep. I invite you to follow as I read through the book or through the passages of the book of Luke and the chapter is chapter 7 just three verses from 11 to 13. It's a very sobering and interesting story that I believe we can glean a lot from here today. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 7, from verse 11 it says, As soon afterward he went to a town called Nain. And his disciples and a great crowd went with him. Verse 12 says, As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out. The only son of his mother and she was a widow. And a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And finally verse 13 says, And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Therefore I have captioned, you know, this short discourse. Do not weep. But why would Christ say to the woman, to this widow, do not weep? When weeping is the natural and emotional response that every one of us have when we lose someone or something important in our lives. As we go through this short story, we will discover something about Jesus that will baffle us. Do not weep. You know, oftentimes people mistake the term grieving and mourning. You know, sometimes we use it interchangeably. But really and truly, there's a difference, a vast difference between grieving and mourning. You see, grieving is an eternal emotional response to a death of a loved one or any significant loss you may have in your life. Maybe a divorce, you know, you lose a job, anything that you may lose in your life. And usually, what accompanies that loss is sadness and anger and guilt 
and confusion and even physical symptoms. On the other hand, mourning involves an external expression and rituals associated with honoring and remembering the deceased. So in short, grieving happens inside of you and mourning happens outside of you. Hmm. So in this situation today, some of us will grieve and some will mourn. Not all can grieve, my friends, because it is not all who have been touched with the life of Auntie Cecilia. But you may mourn, but you cannot grieve. But understanding this concept would further help us to appreciate this, the term or the phrase that Christ shared. Do not weep or do not cry. Pahele. Sounds rather awkward. Là où j'ai appelé un monde avec tout ça, ça fait ses plaies. Parce que c'est ça, bon Dieu, même à nous, pour délivrer nous. Délivrer prêche avec tinsness là, ou ni en l'idée ou avec à soutien. The Bible declares that Jesus, let me call it correctly. From the King James Version, it says, and it came to pass a day after. So I was reading for you from the um, NSV. I'm reading now from the KJV. It says there, eh? and it came to pass the day after when he went into the city called Nain. And many disciples uh, went with him and much people. The Bible makes mention of the day after. And that is significant because the day before. Jesus went down to Nana. He was in Caponium. Now, mind you, Caponium is about 52 kilometers, or roughly about 20 or 36 miles away from him. Or Nain. So it means, my friends, that in order for Christ and his disciples and those who followed him to have gotten to Nain on time for a funeral service, he would have to leave early El Chamba. Oh yes. He had an appointment with somebody down at the gate of Nain and he had to leave early because he would have to go through the forest and go through some desert places and go up some hills, my friends. You see, Capernaum was on the northern side in Galilee. While Nain was on the southern end of Galilee. And my friends, so it, did, it was about uh, 52 kilometers he had to make that there. And so if he had to stop on the way, it would have to be brief. Because he had an appointment. Not only that. But the Bible declares... That Jesus, when he got to that village, something happened. But you must appreciate what Nain means to really understand what took place there. Because Nain really means beauty. Pleasant. Hmm? Nain really means like the paradise of God. Remember the Garden of Eden? Something beautiful, something wonderful and marvelous. And I don't know why they gave Nain the name Nain. Perhaps it because, it's because of the location. It was located in the valley just beyond the Mediterranean Sea. It was just on the border of Galilee, southward, overlooking or looking down at Samaria. It would have been
Man had experienced something Peter that day. <laughs> you see my friends, God made this world beautiful. God made the family wonderful. God made the individual perfect. But the Bible declares that when sin entered into this world, it marred the creation of God. And things that were pleasant became bitter, my friends. Things that were nice became upsetting. And so today, nothing pleasant was overshadowed or overwhelmed with darkness. The darkness of grief and men and women were mourning. Sounds like our situation today. Oh yes. You know when our loved ones are with us, it's a, a name situation. You heard it in a eulogy? Beautiful lady, nice smile. I always remember when I went to my mother-in-law. Wonderful, calm, selective. Nin, pleasant. But you see, once you live under this sun, darkness will come. Just like the Garden of Eden, God made it was beautiful. When sin entered, my friend, darkness came and separated God from man. And the man and the woman, separation came, my friends. And today, Jesus decided to come to Nain and change things around. He wanted to bring back the pleasantness hmm? back in Nain, my friends, because sin had taken control and taken over and brought death. That's why you and I today experience grief. That's why some of us mourn with those who are grieving because of the darkness that sin has caused in God's beautiful world. You see, Nain was a typical village in the Jewish economy. And therefore, Nain would have had perhaps agriculture um, and trading as one of its chief uh, occupations. The society was influenced by traditional Jewish cultures. Therefore, it would mean that Nain would have had a strong family and a patriarchal system where family was important. Huh? Talking about Nain. Where the father would have been the strong figure in the home. But you know how life goes sometimes, my friends. The family today is not as God would like it to be. It's messed up. The name that God designed it to be is no more, my friends. You no more have the kind of social, strong social fabric that God intended for the family. You see, Nain also was very close to Nazareth where Christ grew up. This would mean that Christ at some point in his life, before this encounter, would have come by Nain already. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he knew the family, I don't know. Something would have happened that he would have to go through Nain. But he knew the place, my friends. And it tells me that God, Christ knows you and he knows your situation. He has come by there before, my friends. You may not have seen him, you may not have heard him, but he has come by your situation already. Oh yes. Some of us, perhaps our family is in distress. Perhaps on the job. Huh? Perhaps in our personal lives, life is not what it used to be. The joys are, not, are, are there no longer. But Jesus decided to go to Nin that day. He took time off from his busy schedule to ensure that he got to Nin at the right 
time. And the Bible says that when Jesus got there, verse 12 says, and it came to pass verse 12, now when he had come nigh unto the gate of the city, talking about Nain here, behold there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. Jesus deliberately took time to come to Nain to meet with this mother. The Bible declares in verse 13, and that's where the miracle happens. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. The Bible says that God saw her. He saw her not as the disciples saw her. He saw her not as the crowd who followed him saw her. But the eyes of Jesus, the flaming eyes of Jesus burned through the skin of her head and passed through the scalp and down through the skeletal bones and got to the brain and to the subconscious and the consciousness of this woman. God saw her pain, my friends. God saw the sorrow that she was experiencing, not only now, but the pain she would experience in the future. God saw her past, he saw her present, and he saw her future. You know, God sees, my friends, when other people don't see. You see, some people are dressed nicely like men, you know, and they have a nice garb on, but they're not sure what's happening on the inside. You might be grieving, my friends, but they don't know what's taking place because they can't see down deep in your soul, but God does. God does, my friends. Bible says, he sees. You see, God could have sent Peter to Nain to perform this miracle. But if he had sent Peter there, Peter would talk too much. You know how some of us do, you know? We have to give a long lecture, long talk before we go about God's business. He could have sent uh, James and John, my friends. But you know how these guys are? These guys like to call fire from heaven. Perhaps somebody would have died that day. Yes, my friends, but he came, he went himself, my friends. He could have sent Judas. Maybe Judas would have charged the woman. What happened in Laha? Judas got charged in Yako. You know how it is, my friends. Everything is for money these days. Hmm? There's a reason that God is not sending people to help solve your situation. Hmm? There's a reason that God is not sending a neighbor to help you out because he understands and he knows their heart's desire. But he's coming himself, my friends. Oh, the Bible declares that he saw. And I believe as I perceive this thing, my friends, that God saw this woman before she was born, my friends. The Bible declares, before I made you, I knew you. Oh, yes, my friends. That's what he said to Jeremiah. And I believe that when sin entered this world, God had marked that spot down in name by the gate because he had to go down there in the future to deliver this woman. Oh, if you understand this thing, my friends, you'll be excited as I'm excited now. When God went through the ages, when you went through time, time and time again, he would stop by that spot. He's saying to himself, one day I'm going to come here and I'm going to set a woman free. You see, God knows your entire life. He knows when you're in deep trouble and he knows when you need help. Sometimes we don't know when we need help. Huh? Sometimes we call on God and say, God help me. God say, no, stay there still. Now we do let we serve. Oh, God knows what time to show up, my friends. And when the time was right, the Bible declares that he, he left Capernaum. Huh? He went past through the bush. And he went down to Nain. And the Bible declares that 
they said to them, stop. Stop this procession. God was able to say to this woman, weep not because life was in her presence. When Jesus is in your story, oh, there's no death, my friends. Oh, when Christ is there with you, there's no need to mourn. You may be grieving, but he's saying to you, don't weep, don't mourn, my friends. Because I'm going to set you free. There's a little story as I close that I believe fittingly illustrates this concept of do not weep. So once upon a time, in a small village nestled between rolling hills, there lived an old woman named Eliza. She was known throughout the village for her kindness and wisdom. Despite her age, her eyes sparkled with life, and her smile could warm the coldest of hearts. One day news spread like wildfire through the village that Eliza's son had perished at sea. Villagers gathered round about her humble cottage, offering their condolences and shedding tears for her lost. But Eliza remained stoic. Huh? She welcomed the visitors with a gentle smile and whispered words of comfort to them. When asked why she did not weep or cry or mourn for the loss of her son, she replied, do not weep for me. For my son is not truly lost. He lives on in the memories we share and the genuine love that unites us. So to the Imbert family, I want to say to you that yes, you may grieve and you may mourn. But mourning need not be marked by tears alone, but by the celebration of a life well lived and the sharing of love that is eternal. Only God can give that love. So, in the shadow of your grief this afternoon, ma'am, God can be a beacon of hope to you and the rest of you all. Amidst this great lost Auntie Olive, remember, do not weep, for love transcends even death. You know, one of these days, the Bible says through the pen of Paul that Christ will ask death the question. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? And God will say to death, pass it. <laughs> you know, when people tell you pass it, is they're asking you for, for things that belong to you, not them. Hmm? They tell you pass it, so they want your money. But when God says to death, pass it, he's asking him for what belongs to him. One of these days, my friend, God will shout to death, pass all the dead that you have snatched from me. Oh, what a wonderful day that would be. Amen? May God bless us all as we continue to contemplate the love of God. And may we always remember in times of lost, do not weep, because the love of God transcends even death. Amen? God bless. Thank you. Come on, give Pastor Antoine a big amen. amen. Thank you for that inspirational word. Very profound, very deep. Thank you, man of God. At this time, we are inviting the family members scheduled to sign the register to meet us on your, meet Pastor Philip on your right. That's, uh, sorry, that's my right, your left, uh, right over there. Those individuals scheduled to sign the register 
please meet Pastor Philip on your left, that is my right. And while, you, uh, while the register is being signed, we will have a musical rendition by Alana Corsini and Mariah Morissette. Welcome them as they come. Give them a big amen. amen. Alana Corsini and Mariah Morissette. to what I could not understand and for the cause of Christ I have spent my days believing that what he had me be is who I am as I've come to see the weaker side of me I've realized His grace is what I'll need When sin demanded justice for my soul Mercy said no I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you slip away You don't have to be afraid Mercy said no take control life and death stood face to face darkness tried to steal my heart away thank you Jesus mercy says no And his son to save us from the cross he built a bridge to set us free oh but deep within our hearts there is still a war that rages that makes a sacrifice so hard to see No, I'm not gonna let you go. I'm not gonna let you slip away. You don't have to be afraid. Mercy said no. Sin will never take control. Life and death stood face to face. Darkness tried to steal my heart away. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy said no. And now when heaven looks at me, it's through the blood of Jesus, reminding me of one day long ago.
amazing, wasn't it? Come on, give them a big amen. Oh, I wish I could sing like that, man. My God, that's a beautiful, beautiful song. Of course, we want to thank uh, our two sisters for that beautiful rendition. We have come to the end of our service. You have been an amazing audience. I invite Sister, is it Kia? Sister Kia to do for us our vote of thanks, followed by the benediction and then you will be on your way. Okay. Good morning to all. Yeah. Good day to all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on this blessed day, as we gather to honor the memory of my beloved grandmother, Cecilia Imbert, I am reminded of a profound saying, God has two dwellings, one in heaven and one in a thankful heart. With heartfelt gratitude, I extend my deepest thanks to every one of you who has made today possible. First and foremost, our gratitude goes to the Almighty Father for granting us this opportunity to celebrate the life of our dear grandmother. We are truly We are truly grateful for his blessings and guidance. Sorry. We would also like to express our appreciation to our special guests and esteemed pastors for taking the time out of their busy schedules to grace us with their presence. Your presence has brought comfort and solace to our hearts. A heartfelt thank you goes out to our choristers for blessing us with their beautiful melodies, filling this ceremony with a sense of peace and serenity. Our appreciation knows no bounds for those who played vital roles in our grandmother's life, especially during her final days. Auntie Monica, for being her dedicated chef and ensuring her meals, especially her smoothies, were prepared and delivered on time. Auntie Albina, for her unwavering support as both of her personal nurse, personal nurse sorry, and chef, standing by our side throughout this journey. Cleaver, Auntie Helena, and Auntie Mina, for their constant long-distance calls, offering reassurance and love from afar. Auntie Priscilla for her devoted care after my grandmother's surgery. Mr. Vic, Mr. Berthier, for being her chauffeur after her surgery as well. Mrs. Vanji and Mr. Brain, for being her companion, her companion and helper. To every one of you who offered words of sympathy, gestures of caring and acts of love, we are eternally grateful. Your support has been a source of comfort and strength during this difficult time, serving as a testament to a profound impact my grandmother had on so many lives. Special thanks to our extended, oh sorry, special thanks are extended to Crick's Funeral Home for the exceptional care of our beloved grandmother, ensuring her final farewells was dignified and respectful. To everyone who contributed, participated, or donated to celebrate the life of my grandmother, 
Your thoughtfulness, generosity, and support will always be treasured and remembered. They say that life is not about the amount of breaths you take, but the moments that take your breath away. As we reflect on the moments that took our breath away, let us remember that what we have once deeply enjoyed, we can never lose. My grandmother's love and legacy will forever be a part of us. In closing, I leave you with these words by Helen Keller. What we have once enjoyed deeply, we can never lose. All that we love deeply becomes a part of us. Thank you to all from the bottom of my heart. All right, thank you once again. We've come to the end of our service this afternoon. I don't know, I, I think someone mentioned that the minister might be here, the parliamentary representative for ancillary. Did I? No? Oh, he's there. So we just want to acknowledge him. Uh, he may be outside. We just want to acknowledge the parliamentary representative and the minister for government. Uh, Mr. Wayne Girard. Gerard, am I correct? Yes, thank you so much. We want to acknowledge him uh, this afternoon. Um, also, I want to acknowledge Sister Nifa. <laughs> Sister Nifa, I didn't see you earlier. Sister Nifa, where are you? One of my favorite people in the world. God bless you. It's good to see you. Please stand to your feet with me, everybody, uh, and as we get ready to pray and close our service this afternoon. The recessional hymn immediately after the prayer. The recessional hymn is hymn number uh, Sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we shall see it afar. And so uh, we just want to give some instruction. Once again, we are so immensely grateful for the power and presence of the Holy Spirit here with us. We thank you, God, that you have brought consolation and peace to the family members. And we know, God, that they need that consolation not just today but tomorrow and maybe even next year and maybe even 10 years from now and we ask god that at every moment when they remember sister imbert that your holy spirit will be there to soothe and to comfort and to give hope knowing god that indeed she lived a life that was pleasing to jesus christ we thank you and we give you praise and we ask the lord that you would take full control of the lives of those of us in this room as we continue to seek to reflect the character of Jesus in all things that we do. We thank you and we give you praise now and for eternity. In Jesus' mighty name, let God's people say, amen. amen and amen. Please remain standing as the recessional hymn is sung. God bless you and have a wonderful evening. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there.
not a part of that. According to your will, dear God, you know all things. You know whether she was faithful to you. We pray, dear God, that you will bless the family members who are left behind. Comfort every one of them. And may every one of us decide to follow you, to accept you, dear God. Because in the grave, there is no more opportunity to accept Christ and surrender to him. So Lord, mark this God. And when the dead in Christ will rise, we pray that every one of us will make our commitment with you today. That if we die, we will die in the Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Please. 
Seems like yesterday we used to rock the show I laced the track, you locked the flow So far from hanging on the block for dough Notorious, they got to know that Life ain't always what it seemed to be Words can't express what you mean to me Even though you're gone, we still a team Through your family, I fulfill your dreams In the future, can't wait to see If you open up the gates for me Reminisce sometime, the night they took my friend Try to black it out, but it plays again When it's real, feeling's hard to conceal Can't imagine all the pain I feel Give anything to hear half your breath I know you're still living your life after death
a question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah Ik ga het niet blijven op je naar hou. Come on, how are you doing? This is my wife. 